Hey everyone, my name is Salamander Anagram, and welcome to this video tutorial series on modular synthesis in Reactor. In these videos, we'll talk about what we mean when we say modular synthesis, how that compares to conventional synthesis. I'll talk about what signal flow means and how we can use it to shape an audio signal over time. Uh, we'll show how to create new projects, how to add modules to those projects, how to connect modules to each other, and finally, how we can use that knowledge to build our own synthesizer that has fully modular characteristics. If you like these videos, please check out our website at adsrsounds.com. All right, so to begin, I want to load up a more conventional synthesizer, and we're going to talk briefly about how it works and how that differs from a modular system. So I'm going to use Monarch as an example. And Monarch is a synthesizer that was developed by Native Instruments. And basically, it's a digital emulation of an old analog synth from the 70s known as the Moog Model D. Now, the Moog Model D, despite being fairly old, uses a setup that is still very common in modern synthesizers. And I just want to cover that setup really quickly. So we're going to take a look at the signal path of this synthesizer. And the signal path is basically the path that our audio signal takes um, from the point that it's generated until it reaches your speakers. So in the case of the Monarch synthesizer, our sound is generated in the oscillator section. And we have three oscillators. We can change a few of their characteristics, such as what octave they play at, the fine tuning, and what waveform they play. And these three oscillators all flow into a mixer section right here. And as the name implies, the mixer section just takes those three signals and it adds them together and creates one signal at the output. The output of the mixer flows into the filter section where the sound uh, is run through an audio filter. And then after the filter, the sound is controlled by an amplitude envelope down at the bottom here. And the amplitude envelope basically is just controlling the amplitude of the signal over time. So this is a very conventional setup for a synthesizer. It's what's known as subtractive synthesis because basically we're creating a signal that has a lot of harmonics uh, in the oscillator section over here. And then we're using the filter to subtract some of those harmonics from the signal and shape the signal uh, to get the sound that we want. So this differs from a more modular system in several ways. And the first way that we can say uh, that it differs is that the signal path is set in stone. There's not anything that we can do to change the signal path of this synthesizer. Um, so our oscillators, no matter what we do, are going to flow into the mixer section. The output of the mixer, no matter what we do, is going to flow into the filter, and so on and so forth. Um, another way in which this differs from a modular system is that the number of elements that we have is completely fixed. So, for example, we have three oscillators. If we wanted a fourth oscillator, we're out of luck. You know, There's nothing we can do to add another oscillator to this project. And another way in which we could say that this differs from a modular system is the modulation that we have access to is very limited. 
So for example, we have this filter envelope here. And the filter envelope generates an envelope signal that then controls the cutoff point of our filter. And there's nothing we can do to change that. We couldn't, for example, have the filter envelope affect the resonance or affect the tuning of one of the oscillators or something like that. It's just not designed for that. And in a more modular system, if we have an envelope, then we're going to be able to route that envelope to control pretty much any parameter that we want. And so as you may be surmising, basically uh, with a modular system, we're going to have a much more open-ended control over what kind of sound we want to generate and what kind of signal flow that sound is going to pass through on its way to your speakers and the types of modulation that we have. The strength of conventional synthesis though is that what we're going to have all this stuff is set up for us already the instant we load up Monarch and it's designed to create a very certain type of sound and it's very efficient and powerful uh, when you want to stay within that same system. When you open a new instance of Reactor, you should be greeted with this start screen here. This start screen is gonna give you a few different options for how you can use Reactor. And for the purpose of these videos, we're gonna be choosing the patch option in the center. If you're already in Reactor and you wanna start a new project, what you can do is just go to the upper left hand corner here, find this little triangle and go to the file menu and choose new rack. So by default, we have two modules added to our rack. The first one is an audio in module. And as the name implies, audio in allows you to take audio from another source and to route it into your project. So this is mainly useful when you want to create an audio effect or something like that. And then we have the audio out, which again, as the name implies, is going to lead to our speakers. So anything that you plug into the audio outputs there is going to be sent to your system sound. To find a module to add to the interface, we're going to use the side pane within Reactor, which is over on the left hand side here. If you're not seeing the side pane, then you can turn it on using the magnifying glass icon in the upper left hand corner here. So whenever that's highlighted, you should have access to the side pane. Now the side pane also has several tabs. So in order to access the file browser, you want to make sure you have the other magnifying glass down here also highlighted. So there's a bunch of different things that are we have access to within the side pane, but for the purposes of these videos, we're mainly just going to be interested in the file browser. So it's all the way over at the left here, which you can also turn on using the F1 button. Once you've found the file browser, we just want to locate the blocks uh, within your file browser. And this should be fairly easy. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the library tab here and the blocks are added to that. So we can open up this folder and we have a couple of different folders full of blocks that we can use to create projects with. And the bento box folder is going to have all of the building blocks of a conventional synthesizer. So we're gonna have stuff like uh, oscillators and mixers and filters and envelopes, which is you know, all the things that we just covered when we were looking at Monarch. All that sort of stuff is going to be in the bento box folder. And then the utility folder is going to be more like ways to interact with MIDI, to get MIDI data and stuff like that. So just as an example, I'm gonna load up an oscillator block from the bento box folder. 
And you can find the oscillator. It's about halfway down here. Named OSC Vento Oscillator. So if we drag this onto our interface, just click it and drag it on to the structure view here, or the panel view here. And uh, once it's there, you can move stuff around by clicking it and dragging it on the interface. So you can set this stuff up in any order you want. Now, modules can have inputs and outputs. They don't necessarily need to have inputs and outputs, but they can. And any inputs that a module has is going to appear on the left-hand side of the interface over here. And any outputs are going to appear on the right-hand side here. So there's a few different ways that we can visualize blocks. And if you're not seeing the inputs and the outputs, that's because of these three options right here. For these videos, I'm mainly just going to be using uh, this one I have selected right here, all the way to the right. And that is going to show all of your imports and outports and all the connections between your inputs and outputs. To make a connection from one device to another, you can choose the output that you'd like to connect and click on it, and then you can drag it over to any input that you want to connect that to. So I am about to connect my oscillator here to my audio output. We haven't set a pitch for our oscillator, which means that it's going to be playing at a very low frequency below the limit of human hearing. So it's not going to sound like anything. Well, I'm not going to sound like much anyway. You can kind of hear it. Um, and you can see that appearing over here, which is being sent to my speakers. This is the audio output for the reactor. So you can see it's going to the left channel only, because I connected it to the left channel. And we could connect it to the right channel as well. Now it's connected to both. All right, so in this video, we covered a lot of ground. We talked about the difference between modular and conventional synthesis, and we showed the basics of the reactor interface, how to add new modules to it, and how to connect modules to each other. In the next video, we're going to get more in depth with signal flow, and we're going to start making a little bit of sound. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, I'm Salamander Anagram. Thank you.